Hi guys! Welcome back. I hope everybody had a fabulous holiday. We certainly did. We had uh, lots of family time, which was great. Opening gifts, eating a lot of uh, good food, drinking some wine, and just in general having a good time. We had a very happy new year, and I started it off yesterday with a color theory, short basic color theory class on the Decawart uh, Facebook page. That was fun. And uh, so I really appreciate you guys showing up for that. That was uh, awesome. Decorate's very happy and uh, really excited about the launch of their new Art for Everyone website with all the videos. So if you get a chance, make sure you go and check that out. Today we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to uh, work on painting roses. This is a really loose and relaxed technique. There is nothing strenuous about this. So just relax and have some fun with it. But before we get started on that, um, I have to tell you about our giveaway. So I think you're all familiar with Painting World magazine. Fantastic magazine. And given the current situation, they have literally been knocking it out of the park. Beautiful new issues every few weeks. I mean, Cole and her team over at Viking Woodcrafts and at uh, Painting World magazine have really been pulling out all the stops to really create some amazing, amazing magazines. And having said that, guess what our giveaway is today? We have two digital subscriptions to Painting World magazine to give away. And we also have a gorgeous stencil set for two of you as well. So there are four prizes today. So don't forget to hit the share button and uh, leave us a comment in the comment section. Tell us where you're watching from. We would love to know. And uh, that's it. That's all you have to do to get entered. Pardon me. That's all you have to do to get uh, entered for those giveaways. <laughs> so we're going to paint this. Did, you... did I what? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies don't burp. I didn't burp. I just couldn't swallow. <laughs> Ass. And BG thirteen. Out the window. Out the window. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> All right, getting started. Oops. There you go. Okay, so today we're going to work on shabby chic welcome. This one involves a basic, a simple background. He wants me to move it forward. There you go. This one involves a simple painted background, uh, some really basic roses, <clears throat> and, um, and some fun stamping. It's really not a difficult one to paint. And then we're going to uh, finish it off by doing some lettering. But before we get to all of that fun stuff, we have to do our surface prep. Now, someone very gently reminded me the other day that, um, even though we're, we're always talking about what we're painting and how we're painting it, I very rarely talk about what I do to prepare my surface. And uh, so I thought this would be the ideal time to do that. I have, for as long as I can remember, have used uh, Decorts multi-purpose sealer for preparing wood surfaces. Um, I also use it on MDF surfaces as well, but mostly for wood. And I really don't like the feeling of it by itself. So I very rarely will just seal the surface and then base coat. So my, my trick has always been to mix the all-purpose sealer 50-50 with my base coat color. So if I'm doing something like this where it's going to have black, you can use any color you want for this. It doesn't really matter. I'm using black. So I mix my black paint and my multi-purpose sealer 50-50 and I apply one coat and let it dry and then I apply uh, a sander to that to smooth out any rough bits, any spots where the grain has st stood up or if I've got any furring and whatnot. That's what I do. So it gets a light sanding. Once that's done, I'll give it another coat of that mixture and then let it dry and sand it one more time just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then, and only then, will I put just one coat of the black paint over top of that. So it's two coats of the mixture and then one coat of the lamp black paint. And that gives me a really nice smooth surface to work on. And I have fewer issues with it. 
When I'm working on wood, like this one is a Baltic birch, um, you don't really have to worry too much about tannins, but painting on pine and other woods, you can get some bleeding and it will change the color of your paint. It will eat, eat through or leach through the paint over time and you'll end up with brown marks or some yellowing in the paint. So it's always a good idea to throw a, a little bit of sealer onto your surface just to prevent any of those tannins from coming up particularly when you're not sure about what type of surface you're working on. Gee, it's snowing in Maine. It's snowing in Maine? It's snowing here. Yeah. Happy New Year. A bunch of Happy New Year's. Yeah, I hope everybody had a Happy New Year, a nice holiday. Time to get back to work, though. I'm ready to get back to work. Kitty Grant is on. Oh, how are things in Dartmouth? Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So uh, the base for this is that lamp black and we're going to put a, a coat of the white on it. It's sort of similar to that barn board effect that I, I like to do. Only in this case, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for that heavy texture. I am looking for a thin coat with some irregularities. So I'm just using, this one is just a natural bristle. This is an encaustic brush as well. I couldn't find my fugly brush, so this will have to do. So I'm going to put a coat of that on. This is just warm white. Neatness doesn't really count. I just follow the grain of the wood instead of having a you know, pattern and brush marks going in every direction. So, okay, so there we go. We have our base coat done. Easy peasy. 82 and sunny in Florida. They have the AC on. <laughs> wow. Well, we could have the AC on here too, but... No. <laughs> so, I'm going to dry this real quick. This is just a little bit of water in here. It won't take long. story of my life watching paint dry <laughs> there we go you need to bite the bullet and buy a caustic brush and caustic an encaustic brush so this is what I'm looking for is just sort of this fine stria it's not fully opaque white it has a little bit of movement and pattern in the background but nothing over the top no heavy big black marks we're going to let this dry completely now, I have one prepped, so I'm going to set this one aside. Now, here is mine. I've got my line drawing and everything already on, but we're going to continue with the next step to creating this background. Now, I have some fun stamps. Uh, the stamps that I'm using are from Stampendous. The one I prefer to use is called Vintage Note, but that one seems to have wandered away as well. I think it's somewhere with my... Thank you for the code for the brush, guys. I ordered some brushes for my Christmas present. Ooh, it's always nice to get goodies, especially art goodies at Christmas time. So I'm going to load up my stamp and I'm not worrying too much about getting it perfect. I just want to create a little bit of background interest, a little bit of visual texture in there. I'm not worried about it being legible. I'm not worried about it being um, neat. I'm just trying to keep it all going in the one direction. And I think that's just about enough. It's just enough to create some interest back there. Judy asks, is there a reason why you always use warm white instead of titanium? I have a couple of reasons. Titanium white is cool. It has a colder feel to it. It's very bright. And it tends to be a little harsh, especially when I'm working over um, a surface like this one where it's black. So the contrast would be much higher and it would be a little brighter. I wanted to subdue this a bit. I like to keep things a little bit warm. I don't really go for cold colors. So my go-to has always been warm white because I feel that that one, although you still get the contrast, it isn't a harsh contrast. So that's the reason I use warm white as often as I do. 
I keep my titanium white for those brightest highlights. That's what my titanium white is for. So I have my stamp in place. And again, I'm not worrying about you know, perfection with this one. I just wanted it to give a little movement, little pattern in the background. Now, I could not find my vintage note stamp. That one is my favorite. Stampendous has been very good to me over the years. Somebody asking, what, what stamp pad do you use? Uh, the stamp pad that I use the most often is, uh, this is a Stazon stamp pad. And when I get one, take it out of the packaging, I label it right off the bat so that I, because you, I've always got three or four kicking around. And if I label it, then I know how long it's been open. So when I get to that point that it's, you know, not functioning or not inking up well, then I know that, you know, it's time to replace it. It's a year old. It's a year old this year. And I have a brand new one to replace it, but this one's still working just fine. So now that we have that background in, we need to create a little bit of color in there. Now I'm using two colors for this portion. I'm using a tiny bit of green gold and primary magenta. And I do mean a tiny bit. I'm only using what it. What can they use if they can't get that? The, if you cannot get your hands on the primary magenta, you can use primary red. Oh, I was just talking about the fluid acrylics. Yeah, you can use primary red from the Americanas. And for the green gold, if you don't have that, you can use olive green. So oh. I'm just... There's your bestie. My bestie. There's Miss Karen Jones. Miss Karen. So I've got a little bit of that primary magenta, and I do mean a little bit, and I'm thinning it out with water. I want a very watery mix. So I'm going to just stroke in a few little places like this with some of that primary magenta. What are you looking for? Does somebody ask what, which stamp are you using? Oh, uh, Vintage Note. That's not it. That's it. Not the one you're using. Well, it's the one I always use. I normally use. It's the one that's in the pattern. Oh. I just couldn't find mine. But you found one. So I'm putting in just these little teardrop shapes. Oh, it's called Tracy's Fave on your website. That's right. That's right. So here we go. We've got these little, I call them little buds. That's all we're doing. So just little rose buds. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit of that green gold. I'm going to thin that out. And I'm just going to put in little strokes of green here and there. These are just going to replicate little leaves in the background. They can be almost non-existent. Just let them be as transparent as possible. It's just going to add a little bit of pattern in that background. And then the fun part. I'm going to find my... Now I'm working with a 3 8 black gold angled shader for this. Now these flowers are very, very simple to paint. Now I, I use, oh my goodness, Joe Sonia's fast drying glaze quite a bit. The reason I like using it is because it will make the color very transparent without killing the color. So it, I get more and more transparency and it helps me control the color easily. So we're going to do all of our shading on these flowers first. Get some, get some more water on it there. Here we go. So I'm just using a little bit of water and I've thinned out some of that. Oh, you sold out a vintage note. Yeah. Oh, you found one on Amazon. Okay. So I'm essentially just putting a little patch of that 
primary magenta in the center of that flower. Somebody just said, I just bought your all-purpose sealer from Stockade. Yes. If you're looking for Decorts all-purpose sealer, you can find it at Stockade.com. You can get it on Decorts.com. Um, MaureenBaker.com also carries it. And so does Viking Woodcrafts. So I there it is, that little puddle of primary magenta, lots of water. Almost doing like a watercolor. It's just a, a wash of color in the center. Just like that. Hmm. Neat. And you're going to do that to all of the flowers. What's the product you're using? The, the medium that I'm using is Joe Sonia's Fast Drying Glaze. You can get that on joesonia.com. Do I have Joe Sonia on here? I don't have Joe Sonia. I'd give you the website, but it's josanyo.com. It is josanyo.com. <laughs> <laughs> the the fast drying glaze is my do everything medium. I thin my paint with it. It helps paint level. I can float with it. Use it as a float medium. That literally made me gasp when you just brushed a puddle into the center of each flower. <laughs> Yikes! Dot lol. So again, neatness doesn't count for this. At this point, we're just getting some color in the center of these flowers, like so. Ain't no color by numbers here. Nope. <laughs> Lines don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's intimidating to do this, to just slap color on. We're so used to um, meticulously placing color what not when it comes to toll and decorative painting in this particular case you don't need to worry about that we're just getting some color in so here we have these these smushy looking roses and i love my fast drying glaze so i'm going to dry this real quick You know, we are in the middle of a snowstorm here today. We're expecting somewhere between you know, 10 and 15 inches of snow. Probably see about 25 to 30 centimeters, which is not out of the ordinary for us. There we go. So it's a perfect day to stay in and paint. <laughs> Jessica asks, uh... Could I use the same method with yellows and other colors? Absolutely. Just when you're doing this, putting this patch of color in the center, use your darkest value. So if you've decided you want to do these in yellow, then choose your deepest and darkest yellow that you plan to use as the one that is going to be in the center of this flower. I think this would be pretty in saffron. Saffron yellow would be so pretty. Oh, I already colored them all. So from this point, we're going to start layering in color, but I'm going to do the leaves first. Is my screen or is the image a bit dark? <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so with the amount of lights we have on right now. <laughs> I have, I've loaded my brush with, this is green gold. And I'm just laying in a little color. I'm not worried about getting it darker at one level or lighter at another. I'm just getting some color in, much like we did with the roses. Like so. So, you, well, this is more of a question for me. Uh, not using the fluid acrylics and using Americana. Would you just thin it out with water or? You can thin it out with water. You can thin it out with um, with your Joe Sonia's glaze or glazing medium. Yeah. This one easily translates to Americanas very easily. You just use colors that are close. Oh. So oh, somebody a little late to the party. <laughs> uh, on the line drawing, did you use your favorite pen? I did. I when I'm tracing. 
I use these things all the time simply because I like that fine point. I don't get heavy, heavy lines when I'm doing this. And did you seal it before coloring? No. <laughs> no, I did not. This one, this one here is just graphite, what you're seeing on here. It's when I'm tracing, I use my pen on the paper to trace it. We will use the pen after the fact, once we are finished painting everything. We are going to use that pen. Oh, Peggy Jones. Uh, hi, Tracy. Happy New Year, and thanks for starting the year right. <laughs> Uh, California is having some great weather. I can make extra room for you. <laughs> oh. Probably not too much painting as there are grandkids and does involve. And does involve? But wine is available. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> you had her at wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So all of those little leaves that you see in there can just be done with, um, where's my ten -aught? What do you need? Just pass me the dish. Thank you. There's my encaustic. I was looking for my ten -aught liner, or my 15 -aught, I should say. No, nope, it's the 10 -aught. So. I'm going to, all of these little tiny leaves, I just use my liner to put a, a layer of color in, like so. Because they're so small, right? We just want a little bit of color in. What color was the leaves? Leaves are green gold. Green this, gold. This pattern has a very short color list. It's mostly whites. I do, in the pattern, I do have the substitutions because we're going to use mixes of color for this. So if you don't have the fluid acrylics, um, there is an alternative in the pattern for creating the colors that we need to create, so. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, go to Art for Everyone and watch Color Theory. Or <laughs> <laughs> she explains mixing colors. And the basic color theory is, is oh, yeah. just that. It's. I could put that website up, actually. Art yep. for everyone. There we go. DecoArt.com, yep. art for everyone. So I've got all of those little leaves filled in. I do like all these little leaves. You just keep everything looking a little airy and light. <laughs> Does anyone have any suggestions for white graphite paper? I can't find one that works worth a stink. Actually, the Deckworts, Deckworts white graphite works very well. They have it on the Deckwart website. It's an excellent graphite paper. I will make one suggestion. When you've got a brand new sheet of graphite paper, it's going to be very shiny when you turn it over. Take a piece of paper towel and just lightly wipe it down. And Sorry. yeah. It'll just wipe it down. It'll, one, it'll take that shine off, and then you won't get that that hard, hard transfer where it's difficult to remove. Where can I get this pattern? You can get it at tracemoreau.net. Yep. Right there. And we bundled them. There's actually two patterns. Um, one is called A Touch of Romance, and it has three or four, and there's a tablet stand and a jewelry box and a birdhouse and a phone stand. In that one pattern, yeah, and, and then do all sorts. yeah, and then in the um, shabby chic welcome, which is the one we're working on today, is the other one, and we just bundled them together so that you can get both patterns, and then you've got a bunch of different alternatives. Uh, the other thing that I did, I was sitting here the other night thinking to myself that um, not everybody necessarily wants a welcome sign, so um, I was thinking of alternative lettering for for this. And so at there's stay out. <laughs> at least stay out. No, <laughs> um, no things like be Wear kind. A dog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So um, I came up with some alternatives, and the PDF with those alternatives is in the freebie section. Oh, there you go. So if they if you want something other than um, 
just welcome. Um, we do have one that says walk in grace. There is one that says um, create and inspire and dream. But not one that says stay up. And, uh, and be kind, but not one that says stay out. No. <laughs> no trespassing. <laughs> no trespassing. <laughs> so we no have... trespassing. Violators will be shot. No, I hope not. Survivors will be shot again. So now that we've got all of those leaves in place, we want to shade these a little bit just to give them a little definition. And I'm using a little bit of sap green. If you don't have the fluid acrylics, you can use the uh, plant plantation pine. pine. Wow, my lips aren't moving, working today. Plantation pine. So I'm going to load up my brush with a little of that sap green. I'm not having too many issues today. That's great. No, that's good news. Joining late because I was watching the olive tag on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just shading my leaf under the flower with a simple float of this sap green or plantation pine, if that's what you're working with. And it's just to separate the leaves. <laughs> With COVID, stay out is fitting. <laughs> uh, somebody gets me. <laughs> so there is the shading on that leaf. It's just enough to define the shape of the leaf and separate it from the from the flower little bit. Neatness doesn't count with these ones either. It's just enough to define the shape of that leaf. My video cut out. What do I wipe my graphite paper with? Paper towel. Paper towel. That's just a lay it. for me too. And I, uh, I just I lay it. Use, oh, I didn't use graphite paper. I used carbon paper. Yeah. No, carbon paper is made with wax and it would stick to your, per, your surface. But there is a light coating even on graphite paper. Now you can remove it by wiping off with a little piece of paper towel. I hated carbon paper. <laughs> but I didn't know that. <laughs> so, just about finished with these leaves. As you can see, I'm not putting, it's not a really strong shadow. It's just enough to lift and separate them. Almost sounds like a, you know, brassiere com commercial. <laughs> <laughs> lift and separate. <laughs> I love your audience. <laughs> Are they behaving or misbehaving? Oh, well, Zodi came up with a good idea. Have love you with a large space in between and then mm -hmm. very fine print to hate you. <laughs> love or to... love, lo like in between love you yeah. in just smaller print to hate. <laughs> love to hate you. Hmm. As long as I don't get presents in the mail that yeah. somebody has to defuse. No horse heads. No horse heads. Nope. So <laughs> there is the shading. Oh, nice. And again, I'm not really worried about the, you know, the perfection of it. These little leaves get a little shadow at the base where the stem joins. Keep it simple. Don't overwork it. Just put it in there. Don't worry about getting them perfect. It really does look like watercolor. And I can't, that's because I'm using so much water and I'm using so much of that fast drying glaze. It keeps the paint nice and transparent. And it's very soft it's weird. and feminine, which is what we're going for with this one. We want soft and feminine. What is the difference between quinacridone magenta and the magenta you use? The quinacridone magenta is very, very vibrant. It's more of... It's, uh, this is actually closer to a true magenta. It has a higher blue content. So when you look at it, it has a purplish cast. Mm. Let's, let's show you side by each so that you can really see the difference. The primary magenta me and Frida can be best friends. You and Frida can be best friends. Yes. Okay. Animals welcome, humans tolerated. <laughs> so I'm going to go here on the back of the paper just to show you. Let me rinse out this brush here. Oh, I've got a round. That'll do. 
so the primary magenta is very much a red. It has, you know, it's a very vivid red. See, the quinacridone magenta. It has more blue in it, so it takes on more of a purplish red. This one has less blue, so there is a significant difference between yeah, the two. Yeah, I can see it from here and on camera. On mm. camera, that red doesn't show as much pink as it yeah. does there. But Oh, there we go. So this is the quinacridone magenta. You can see that it is much more purpley. Whereas if I rinse out my brush and I take that primary magenta. Much more red. Much more red. Okay. So this quinacridone magenta would lean more to like a red violet into that ballpark. It has that purplish, slight purplish cast where the primary magenta leans more towards the red. I learned something. That's not to say that this wouldn't be really pretty painted with the with the quinacridone magenta. I think that would be gorgeous. What is it? Fast dry gray. What is it? Fast dry glaze? Question mark. I don't know what they're asking. A fast drying glaze is a clear glazing medium. Most glazing mediums tend to act like extenders, where your paint stays wet a little bit longer and then you have to wait for it to close up or dry completely before you can continue to work. The fast drying glaze does exactly the same thing but with a much shorter open time so it dries quicker. But you can accomplish the same thing. Just allows you to continue working. That is a big difference between those colors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. But they're beautiful. I mean the I think that this painted with that quinacridone magenta would be really pretty. The flowers would be very vivid. I love those media paints. I have not been able to find them here in Georgia. It's hard to find them anywhere right now, actually. Uh, I'd have to check, but I think I know where there's there might be some place you can get them. Near Georgia? Yeah. My friend, oh, he works for a framing company in Atlanta and they sell the primary, but you can get them from Dick Blick. Yeah. Yep. Stockade? Stockade has them. Maureen, uh, Maureen um, Baker has them. Yeah. Maureen actually has, she has you a good get stock most, of paint. Most all of them from, directly from DecoArt. Yep. They are available on the website. Yep. Okay, so we have gotten our leaves shaded. We, there's no need to highlight the leaves because we're using transparent color. So the leaves look just fine without a specific highlight. You can, of course, highlight them if you want to, but uh, there's really no need. So now we have to create the color for our roses. And we're going to do that with a mixture of the primary magenta. Where did my little palette knife go? There it is. So we're going Sandy to... Sandy here might have some and she's in GA? Yeah, she's in Georgia. Is she? In, yeah, in Byron, Georgia. So... Sandy McTeer's in Georgia? Yep. Who was I thinking that was in New York then? Veronica. Oh, Veronica. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> You're watching. <laughs> So we're going to create a mid-value. So these flowers are essentially val all values of the same color. So we're going to create a mid-value using that primary magenta. So I'm going to put a little puddle of magenta and I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white and I'm going to make a pink. So there we go. I've got a nice bright pink like so. And we're going to start adding this color in layers. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I've loaded up my angled shader with water and I'm going to pick up some of that mid-value pink that I just made. And I'm going to blend it out 
like I'm going to float, and this is how we do these flowers. So I'm going to do this one right at the top. And we're going to start at the outer edge of this petal, like so. And we're going to float that color in with the darkest value to the outside edge of the petal. Colors the label on the glaze medium bottle. I see more than one kind. Oh, my glazed medium is in this ugly little jar here. That's not <laughs> how it comes. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that pink, that mid-value pink that I just created, I'm going to float that to the outside edge of those petals, keeping the darkest value to the outside edge. And I let the color come back and overlap with that magenta that we put on first. You're an angry face. Why would you have an angry face? I don't know. Did we make somebody angry? Because mm. <laughs> mom said ass? No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the fun part because uh, you can tell I'm not really worrying about what's happening towards the center. I'm worrying about what's happening at the outside edge. When do you term, determine when to use your black gold angle brushes and your faux squirrel brushes? My faux squirrel brushes I use almost exclusively on things like canvas, things that have a heavier texture. Oh, so denser surfaces? Denser surfaces, rougher surfaces. Um, I love them when I'm working with uh, paper backgrounds. I like them on surfaces where I need a lot of moisture because they hold a lot of water. They also hold a lot of paint. But I like them on textured surfaces because they're so tough. The black gold brushes I like on smoother surfaces. Such as this. Such as this, yeah. I love that these black gold, they have just like a razor sharp chisel edge. And so for things like floating and details, and especially on something like this, they are absolutely perfect. So there is my pink. I know she keeps putting models in front of the palette. <laughs> Sorry. <camera. laughs> I'm actually going to adjust the camera right now. So this is just floating and layering in color and always to the edge of those petals so you may want to switch to a smaller angle for some things is that a pen and ink painting no no it's just graphite lines and she's just filling it in and i'm not worried about working over those graphite lines either because we're going to we're actually going to put the lines in again using ink when we're finished So I like that little bit of pink. All right. Let's see who's getting a subscription to Painting World Magazine. Yeah. Who is getting a subscription to Painting World Magazine? It's a digital subscription too, so you'll be able to see it in big, bold color right on your computer screen or on your tablet. Who is our winner? We must have one. So while he's selecting a winner for that first one, we're going to take that. We need to do another value of this. We need to get a little bit lighter still. So I'm going to take a little bit more 
warm white and add it to that first pink that we made. I want to make a nice bright light pink. And I think it needs to be brighter Jessica than that. Porter. Jessica Porter. So. Jessica Porter. Oh, what, do we need, what do we need from her to get her set up for that? She just needs to send me her email address. Okay. And we will be... We'll get that set up for we you. We will get that set up for you. I've been binge watching her videos all week. <laughs> <laughs> so I have created a lighter value of that pink. And I'm going to... Do the same that was actually the comment it landed on. Okay. <laughs> I've been binge watching her videos all week. Or the comment that. So I've got that lighter value of that pink. Now this float's going to be a little bit smaller still, a little narrower, but again to the outside edge. And it's going to create a soft highlight on the edge of that flower but it also keeps that perp that bright pink in place it's not porter it's potter <laughs> jessica potter sorry but my mind put an r there for some reason so now i'm taking that lightest value of pink out all the way out to the edge and in hindsight, I'm looking at this thinking that my magenta should have been darker. It wasn't quite bright enough. Well, you've got 220 people watching right now. Oh my goodness. Not quite the audience. So now is when that flower starts to take shape. Really starts to take shape because we're putting those highlights on the upper edges of those petals. <laughs> no, I don't think she will be teaching anything to do with pencils. <laughs> yeah, the owl she did it was absolutely amazing. And I don't think she's gonna be teaching classes on pencils. No, the colored pencils are just purely for my own advancement as far as my skill set is concerned. It's not a medium I've used much. And uh, I, I don't even come close to having enough skill to teach that. So, but I'll tell you, if you really want to take um, a colored pencil class, um, one of the ones that I've been doing some of her tutorials and following along on some of her videos is Anne Swan. She's a British um, botanical artist. And she works in, in colored pencils, and her work is extraordinary. Is Absolutely that, extraordinary. That's the one you got the book from, right? Yep. Yeah. So Anne Swan, um, of one. course, Lydia Steves is phenomenal. She does amazing wildlife. And her kittens and cats and her puppies are just <laughs> so cute. I like the puppies. She likes the puppies. And... Um, Marion Jackson is another one. I absolutely love Marion's work. And Janelle Johnson. Those have been the ones that I have been um, Ooh, me. taking my lead from. Each one of them has different techniques for achieving certain things, and I've learned so much from each of them. Um, of course, Janelle's work is extraordinary. Her portrait work is beautiful. Marion Jackson does absolutely beautiful florals and still life. Everybody's just giving you props on the owl, though. I'm rather pleased with it. Well, I haven't, I haven't picked up pencils in, you know, probably since I was at art school. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in Germany, wasn't it? Yeah, that was uh, many, many moons ago. Many moon. Many moons. So you can see that this flower is starting to soften. It doesn't quite look so harsh. Harsh. God, I can't even talk today. And I like those highlights, putting in those softer. Is the welcome done on, with a computer font? It is. 
I'm not sure what the name of that font is. Uh -oh. I'd have to look it up. How long did it take to do the owl? The owl was 22 hours. <laughs> 22 hours. I would have pulled out the rest of my hair by then. 22 hours of work I put into him. I'm very pleased with it. I like doing pencils, but it's hard on arthritic fingers. Yes. Yeah. I have to agree with you. It is very hard on arthritic fingers. Then again, so is brushes <laughs> at times. <laughs> Have you checked Ann Coolberg? No. Why does that name sound familiar? Ann Coolberg. Oh, here he goes. He's Googling. Sounds familiar. So I've got yet another layer oh, wow. onto these wow. petals. What do we got there? We have some beautiful pencil drawings oh my I'll say beautiful work she does very nice work yes but you know Janelle Johnson's in that category too her work is extraordinary I love Janelle's work I like her style it's very mm. ethereal uh, ethereal and focal she picks what you want to folk what she yeah. wants you to focus on and the rest is kind of rough is the best way to say it. indistinct she makes the the focal point very smooth and very yeah. distinct from the background nice she does very nice work so now i've got that highlight on so now i have three values of pink i have that primary magenta towards the center i have that brush mix of that sort of carousel pink and then I made a lighter value to soften all of it and now I'm going to start highlighting so I'm going to use a little bit of translucent white now this is a fluid acrylic color a bit. There you go. <laughs> it's a fluid acrylic color you can make this just using titanium white and a little bit of water or a little bit of glaze this is just a translucent white and this is going to be my highlight color so I'm going to load that into my brush are you gonna finish this project I'm going to do one flower and then I'm going to do the lettering so that we can see how it's done so the highlighting on the edge of this this is where you get to clean up all of those rough looking areas and redefine things and that is with this float of that translucent white it's going to help you separate all of those little petals it's going to help define some of them and it really softens I think I better switch to a smaller brush this one is just not cutting it for me today there we go Oh, much better. Okay. I just needed one that would fit the space better. So it's just a highlight at the very edge of the petals. Now, the nice part about doing anything like this is if at any time you are not happy with the shading if you're not happy with the depth or the contrast between all of these little petals there is nothing to stop you from going back in with a little bit of that primary magenta to separate things just to clarify them a little bit don't ever be afraid to come back in if you need to just because you didn't get it right the first time doesn't mean the second time won't be the charm so and it's just paint now I like those highlights to be a little brighter at the outside edge just for the contrast because then things jump a little bit let's 
see that a little bit of that translucent white just helps separate things a little bit. Another angry face. I wonder if they're having trouble with the video. Where do I go, Tracy, to see you when you are live? Uh, we are live every Saturday at 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time or noon Eastern Time on the Tracy Moreau Live Facebook page. We do try to post earlier in the week so that you know when we're going to be where. Um, I will be doing a monthly live on the Decawart Facebook page as well, so keep your eyes peeled for that. We're going to be doing um, all kinds of fun things on Decawart's Facebook page in the next little while. Um, and not just myself, Sandy McTeer's got a great one coming up. Is that one on glitter? No, it's not glitter. Sandy is doing um, a journal page. Oh, nice. Yep, she's got one coming up soon, so you, you want to stay tuned for that one. And that's on Art for Everyone? That one is going to be on the Deckwort Inc. Facebook page. So just keep your eyes peeled. There will be some, um, some advertising for that, so you'll be able to see it. They're free and live, and Sandy's amazing, so you're going to absolutely love what she's got for you for that one. Joy is asking, how do you clean your brushes to keep their edges sharp? Oh, that's a great question. Now, um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. One of the things that I use the most is Dacoart's Brush Magic. I love their... I absolutely love their brush cleaner. Um, another really good one is Jack's Studio Soap. Is an excellent one. So I'll put a small amount of brush cleaner in the palm of my hand and I work the brush back and forth like this. And then I pinch the bristle like so. And you don't pull on it, you just pinch it to hold it there. And then I push the ferrule forward and jiggle the brush. So I'm pushing the brush towards my hand. And what that does is that it helps loosen any paint that gets up into the ferrule so that it's easy to draw it out. And then you rinse the brush and then repeat. Every time you rinse the brush, check to see if the water is running clear. If you can press it on the surface and there's no paint showing, the chances are you've gotten most of it out. Now remember, these are synthetic brushes, so you don't want to hit them with uh, anything too caustic because you can damage it. But I will give you a tip. The best way to protect your brush from getting paint up under the ferrule, there is a little tip that goes along with that. And that is soaking your brush for a couple of minutes prior to dipping them in paint. Let your brushes sit in some cool water for just a couple of minutes. What that will do is the brush will naturally draw the water up under the ferrule. And if there's water up there, the paint can't get there. So give your brushes a little bath beforehand. Keep them clean, meaning you clean them after every painting session, and shaping them is very important. So, and to shape them, you just simply bring them back to their chisel edge, like so, and make sure that they lay flat to dry. If you keep the brushes clean and conditioned, I like to use an inexpensive hair conditioner to do that for some of them. Keep them clean and conditioned, store them properly so that they're bristles up, uh, when they're dry and when they're wet and after you've cleaned them, make sure that they, I just lay my note on paper towels or shop towels <laughs> and just shape them back to that and let them dry. And then you'll always maintain that nice sharp chisel edge. There you go. So we're almost there. We have one more highlight to do and I'm going to do that with some titanium white. I know I have some here somewhere. I keep moving it out of the camera. I know. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a nudge. A what? A nudge. A nudge. Okay. This one is plugged. The cap is plugged. 
I'll just fight the bubble. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of that titanium white out on my palette. I don't need a lot, and I'm going to thin it out. But this is where I want my brightest highlight is on the very edge of those petals. Like so. And all it does is just keep them separate mm -hmm. from the surface. Uh, Linda's asking, uh, great tip, but what brush are you using? This one is a 3 8 black gold angled shader. By? Dynasty. Dynasty. I'm a Dynasty girl. So, as you can see, when every time I put that highlight gets a little bit brighter at the outside edge that shading towards the center gets a little darker Windsor Newton brush cleaner can take out dried varnish oh yeah wow that's impressive Jack studio soap same way I love Jack studio soap I always learn something every time I watch you demonstrate good so I want to deepen a couple of these the shading so I'm picking up a little of that primary magenta and I'll show you where I want to deep it. It's in some of these little flips and folds in the petals. I just wanted to deepen that a little. So I'm just putting a little float in. All right. Let's, uh, you're doing a stencil pack as well, aren't you? Yes, we are. We've Let's got a stencil a, pack. We're going to do a stencil pack now. There's 311 comments. So let's go. So there's that little extra shading. It just sort of helps separate the petals a little bit, gives them a little more dimension, a little more definition. And again, I'm keeping the paint very thin. And it just deepens things a little bit. Cleans them up. Now the fun part about this is that we're not going to worry too, too much about getting that shading perfect because we're going to use our little gel pen to create a little more separation for some of these things and add a few more little details as we go. We have a name. And who is our winner of the pack of stencils? It is a Anita Morin. Anita Moran, Anita, does send me your shipping information and we will get those stencils out to you as soon as possible. So there's our flower, completely dry. Now we have to add a few little details, these little vines and tendrils. We're going to do that with a little bit of that sap green and some of that plantation pine or some of that plantation pine. And I'm just going to use my, I'm using my 10 aught Dynasty Micron liner. I love this one. It's that detail liner. Do you ever use a quarter inch angle? I do. I use quarter inch, a three eighths, and a half inch. Those are the ones that I use the most. But yes, I do use a quarter inch. And I usually use it for all of those little, you know, those little tiny leaves that I tuck into the background. Or if I've got a spot where it's a real tight fit, then I will use that brush in there. So that the rest of this, all these little vines and tendrils off of those leaves. There's an emoji with a mask? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Okay. So once you have your leaves and your flowers and everything done, that's when this little guy comes out. I like this. I just, you know, just lightly sketching around this flower. It just kind of, it details things. It really pops it out too. And it pops out the, that flower very nicely. I just ordered one, one of these brushes. Can't wait to use it. Can't wait to get it. <laughs> Yay, Anita. <laughs> People are congratulating Anita. Excellent. Some stencils. Yep, Anita's getting a set of the Snow Day stencils. 
Oh. For our little snowman pattern. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we have those set of those coming. They haven't been on the website for a while simply because we just cannot seem to keep those stencils in stock. So uh, who knew? <laughs> what kind of pen is that? <laughs> <laughs> this one is it's a Uniball Signo. It, this one is a Japanese ink, so it's very black. They are available on the website. Yeah, I do have some left on the website. I love this pen. It's just for detailing, adding little sketchy lines around things. I, I use them for my design work. I use them for like everything. They're just my go-to for so many different things. Uh, oh, we got Anita Morin's shipping information. Yay! So I just go around and I detail these leaves and the flowers and you know, just putting in little sketchy lines here and there. I'm not really concerned about getting them perfect. I don't know. I have a thing about perfection. It just doesn't exist. Impossible to attain. So, so there we have our flower done. Love it. Love these pens. They're great for this. Now, we're going to put our lettering on now. So I'm going to turn it this way. And I want to explain how I transfer lettering onto a surface. So I wanted this to be roughly centered, not dead center, I think that's boring, but centered on the surface. And I want it to be about four inches. The bottom of this lettering should be about four inches from the top of this. So I measured from this edge down four inches, made a mark on both sides, and then lined up that mark like so on both sides. And with a graphite pencil, I put a nice light line all the way across. I then took my line drawing or my lettering and I put a line underneath the lettering so that it was nice and straight. So these two E's are level, so I put the line across that. Now when I'm placing my line drawing, I look to center it. I want that L almost dead center on here. And then that those two lines line up. So the one on the paper underneath the word welcome lines up with the line on the wood surface and this ensures that the lettering is level and straight and then I tape it into place. So I'm going to grab my graphite paper here. Good heavens. Oh. So I'm going to slip my graphite underneath there. Now I keep one of these. This is a six inch steel edge ruler and I use that to trace all my vertical and horizontal lines because if your lettering isn't straight, if the lines aren't straight, your lettering will never be straight. And then I simply trace out my lettering. I will freehand the curved lines because they're a bit more forgiving, but anything that is straight up and down, I use that ruler. Uh, do the pens run when varnish is applied? Um, I haven't run into that problem, but then again, I have a tendency to seal everything before I do that. So I take my, my finished piece anytime that I'm using ink and I will hit it with a matte spray before anything, just out of habit. Um, I haven't run into that problem, but I look for ways to avoid that problem altogether. So and that's that sealing. Yeah, I use a matte spray or a setting spray first before I burnish anytime I've got ink. Primarily because I have worked with a variety of different furnishes. Some I've had no issues with, others I've had problems with. So I just avoid the issue altogether and hit it with a matte spray beforehand. Oh, trouble is on here. Hi, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. 
Yes, it is morning for her. Yeah. She probably hasn't even got that first coffee downrange what? yet. Get that coffee on you, Deb. See, if we were traveling, I would be downstairs at Starbucks and she would just be getting up. <laughs> <laughs> what is the setting spray? Um, you can use Decorts Matte Spray. It's just something to hold everything in place. Um, we use sprays like that for working with graphite pencils so it doesn't smudge or smear. We use it for pastels, things like that. So um, it never hurts to put something like a matte spray on a painted piece. It's always a good idea, oh. especially when you're working with multimedia. I have a similar surface to yours. Oh, crap. Lost it. There we go. That I picked up from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use your idea to add my house number and a sweet little bird. Oh, that'd be pretty. And a hello stamp. So like I said, it is virtually impossible to paint straight lettering if the lines aren't straight. So that's why I encourage you when you have straight vertical or horizontal lines, break out that ruler. Uh, just because Potter sent my email through message. I'm, I'm so new to this Facebook thing, not sure I did it right. <laughs> we'll check. We'll check. If not, we'll contact you and just message us after you get contacted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I've just about got my lettering where I want it. There's also a messaging service on tracymoreau.net. Yep, there is a message service on my on my website. If you come to the home page, there's the little speech bubble down in the lower right hand corner. Just click on that, you'll be able to send us a message. So I have my lettering on. Now I'm using lamp black for my lettering. You can use whatever color appeals to you, but I'm using a lamp black. You just need clarity. The matte sealer is not a varnish? Technically, no. Technically, no. Okay. Yes. It'll seal things in, but it isn't going to be a permanent varnish. They do have um, their spray sealer in the gloss and in the satin. Those are really nice. So now comes that frightening part that everybody's terrified of, is doing that lettering. <laughs> uh, Tracy, you'd love your hint to use a ruler to trace straight line lettering. I use a steel edge ruler for this for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, plastic edged rulers over time get chipped and marred and you don't get a clean straight edge with them anymore and it doesn't take very long. Um, so that's one. But two, there's also this on the back of steel edge rulers is the cork so they don't slide around. Uh, they all stay put where you put them. But if you're using them for things like paint pens and whatnot, you've got some elevation. And so it prevents the paint from bleeding underneath the stent, underneath the uh, the rulers as well. So good old steel inch uh, steel edge ruler, and I like this little six inch one. It's ideal for easy to handle when you're doing lettering. Yeah, so you're not dealing with this. Yeah, it's the, the old Norman Bates. Yeah. <laughs> so the six inch one is ideal, especially most of us are working on surfaces you know this size, maybe a little bit bigger. And a big 18 inch or a 12 inch ruler gets to be a bit much to handle. So a good six inch steel edge ruler is ideal. So I'm going to be painting this lettering. A lot of great questions today. I'm gonna to paint this lettering with a number two rigger. I'll explain that in a second. And I don't have my asphaltum on the table. Hello. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I have Oh, I need a clean palette. Ever since I bought the zero and the number two rigger, I've been, I love do, doing lettering. Helps if you have the right tool. It, absolutely. It yeah. helps immensely if you have the right brush. Doesn't mean that you can't do it without. Yep. But it makes it easier to do it. <laughs> it makes it definitely easier to do it. Definitely not scared of doing lettering anymore. Yeah. So, I have, once I have my lettering traced on, this is where I like to do my shading for my lettering before I actually paint it. So 
<laughs> I'm going to load up my angle with some asphaltum. What can you use substitute for asphaltum? Ooh. Oh. Oh, I think he wants to answer this one. I think I know the answer to this one. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. Nope. You can use a little bit of burnt umber. Just use it That's very sparingly. Yeah. Burnt umber. That's it. Use it sparingly. And thinned. And thinned, yes. So I'm just shading the right-hand side, darkest value towards the letter, right on the background with just a float of asphaltum. Oh, if you're doing white roses, what would you shade and highlight with? Now, that's a good one. Honestly, you could use almost anything. So um, if you wanted white roses, I would tend to go towards um, probably a pale blue or even a pale green towards the center for a white rose. There you go. No ash Baltimore on your table. Sacrilege. <laughs> so again, I'm putting the darkest value towards the edge of the letter. <laughs> I think I'll let Sue Potts do my lettering. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sue's probably done enough of my pieces and enough of my lettering. She could probably do it with her eyes closed. <laughs> so I'm just putting a little float in there and underneath this little section oh. here. Well, you were talking about surface prep mm -hmm. earlier, oh, yep. right at the beginning. Um, How would you do this on cardstock or heavyweight paper? Oh, on cardstock or heavyweight paper, this would be fun. I would simply transfer the, the flowers on to it. I wouldn't put a base coat or anything on. I would just do go ahead and do it on the, on the watercolor paper. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty. So there's a shadow there, one on this long line. And I know that this looks a little bit sloppy at first when you do this. Of course. Because it's, you know, you're overlapping and it, it just doesn't look all that great at first. So I'll put that float in there. Again, neatness doesn't really count for this. Perfection is to be avoided. Yep, perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Okay, I think I've got it everywhere I need it to be. Whoa, I like using dagger stripers. Wow, that's... I know how to use dagger stripers, and that takes a lot of skill. <laughs> it does. I have a beautiful dagger striper, like oh, a yeah? really good one. you got to know that brush inside and out. And, yeah, there is is a skill to yeah. working a dagger striper and well. <laughs> <laughs> so, consistent. and consistently. It's like doing all of that. Uh, pinstriping. Pinstriping. Yeah. That's what I learned yeah. to do. So, we're going to do black lettering on this one. And I know that this looks a little sloppy, and it will until we start getting some lettering in. So I got my lamp black. And I'm going to thin that paint out. Now, for those of you that don't know what a rigger is, this is a rigger. <laughs> Who is your commenter? <laughs> <laughs> so a rigger... Mysteries is similar to a liner brush when you look at it. It has a round ferrule like a liner brush. The difference is in a liner, the filament or the hair in the brush is arranged much like round brush. Like Who this one. Who that phrase? You or Sandy? Who? Um, I'm guessing they're referring to the perfection is to be avoided. Oh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, that, that I can understand. So a uh, rigger is, or a liner brush is arranged, the hair in a, a liner brush is arranged like a round. So that when you press down on it, it opens up like a teardrop. So a comma stroke, you get a round curve on the edge of the brush. A rigger is arranged like a flat. So when you press down on the brush, it comes out like a chisel edge, like a flat brush. He's going to zoom. 
There you go. So you have a chisel edge like a flat brush. And this makes it ideal for doing lettering. So. Starting here, with the W. Here we're going to start with the W. And she moves it up. So I've pressed my brush down so that I have a flat chisel edge and I start on my chisel edge, follow the curve. And as I come down, I press down on the brush to open it up, to fill the space. Just like you would a dagger striper. Because dagger stripers, you're pretty limited. Yeah. So I'm pressing down to open up the brush till it fills the space. And then I come back up on the chisel edge. And I'm going to do the same thing here. See, Press. If, if you were to lift, like if you were to stop mid-stroke mm -hmm. on with the rigger, and you were to lift up, would the um, end of the stroke be square or be rounded? If I lift up? Yeah, if you were to like stop mid-stroke and just pick the brush off, would it be square or rounded? Square. It'd be square? Because the brush... Yeah. If like I pull it... If a dagger striper, it'd be round. Yeah. So if I ease off, yeah. it comes up. But I still have the brush on the chisel edge. That's why I use them for lettering, because it's much like working with a nib. Yeah. So now I have that pressed down. I opened the brush up till I got at that chisel edge. Press down. Open it. Now I want a rigger. Back up on the chisel <laughs> edge. Now, the nice thing about a number two is that I can open up to like a quarter of an inch wide. And it is a brush. I can come back in and fill in spaces that didn't quite get it, like this right here. And because it's a straight edge, I can get a really clean line. <laughs> I, checked, I just checked all my brushes. I can't believe I don't have a rigger. All uh -huh. rounds, I must order some. Well, if you're <laughs> going to order, if you're looking for rigger brushes, I do have some on the website. Um, I only have the one size at the moment, but I believe the brush guys have them. Make sure you use discount code. Yep, there is a discount code. So if you use the, the code TracyM when you check out, yes. it'll give you an additional discount off of their price. That one. For some reason, I put up a dynasty brush. Uh, there. Brush guys, use a pro promo code Tracy M. So, would a rigger be best when doing ribbon? Um, you could certainly use it for ribbon. <laughs> what brand rigger do you use? Dynasty. It's a Dynasty faux squirrel. 1827 series and it's a number two can't believe i have a rigger brush <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the basics it is for me there we go. Zoom in a little bit set this up And the nice part is because of that chisel edge, I can still do all those fine lines. Well, with the zero rigger, you can still do this with the zero rigger. It doesn't have to be with the number uh, two. This lettering might be a little wide. Yeah. This particular one might be a little wide for a zero. I like the zero for, like, smaller lettering. Oh, you got a straight going. Yeah. I just, I have a whoopsie there. I'll fix it. I was talking about your brush. You yes, yeah, I have a stray. I, 
All the new people are asking, who's the commentator? The commentator is my son, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> Not really a commentator, I'm more of a moderator. <laughs> no, you're a commentator. Yeah. <laughs> He's the color. Still struggle. I still struggle with not pressing too hard on the thin lines. You make it look so easy. You've been doing it a while. Uh, I learned a lot. Guys are out of number two riggers. Oh no, are they? Yeah. Um. Uh, Maureen Baker. Maureen, Baker. Maureen yeah. carries my brushes too. We're running out of stock too. We still have a few. Yeah. Yeah, we still have a few. So I, that is pretty much the lettering in a nutshell. Now you can come back in and clean this up. If you want to highlight this lettering, you can throw in, uh, you know, a few details. Uh, do you, uh, move quick now. He is a commentator. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, ah. Do you post what you will be doing each Saturday? I try to. I usually post, you know, at least a couple of days beforehand. So if you want to miss any, yeah, if you wanted to highlight this, you just simply take your favorite liner brush. In my case, it's a ten aught. <laughs> I noticed my line work improved when I gave up caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Mine got better with more caffeine. So if you want to add a highlight, Ooh. then simply use a liner brush and a little bit of warm white. And I put the highlight on the left side of the lettering. And just on the edge, I don't put it everywhere either. What is the font? I'll have to check on the name of the font for you, but it is a computer font. Um, I get most of my fonts from um, from fontbundles.com. So I had a little schmegly there where the brush had sort of flipped and gone south. And so it kind of cut into the lettering. So I'm going to fix that. So I'm taking a little of my base color on a liner and cover it up. Dry it. And then I come back in with a little bit of that asphaltum on my brush Ooh. and just shade over great it. Questions today. Lots of great questions. So even if you do happen to whoops a daisy on something, which happens to all of us, <laughs> you can always fix it. More some than others. More some than others. <laughs> so I think we still have another magazine subscription to give away. And another stencil kit. And another stencil kit. So um, do you wanna what? Liner brush are you using? Mine is so thin. Here you told you hold the brush. What? Okay. Bah. Mine is so thin here. You hold the brush, it makes it makes these old arthritic fingers hurt. Oh <laughs> that's one of the nice things but, about this. A, like a traditional liner brush is one of these skinny little things, right? So in arthritic it's hard to hang on to one of these, especially when your hands are sore. I really like these ones, these Dynasty Micron. This one is a 10 aught extra long detail liner. I like it because it has more of a barrel on it, so it's not as difficult to hold. And I really like that it's got this great snap, like this bristle is really, really nice. So it has great snap and it holds, surprisingly holds a lot of paint. So these, this one tends to be my favorite liner because it's a very comfortable liner to work with. So we've done our lettering. We walked through this. The There's only a couple more steps to do. Now, one of the things that I really love about this particular piece is the edges of it. And I like doing that um, sort of a we broken... We a subscription to, <laughs> to Deb, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Did Deb win it? Yeah. That's hilarious. Deb, you want a subscription to Painting World Magazine or do you already have one? <laughs> So we're going to do that sort of chippy paint edge to this piece. 
And I do that with my rigger or a round or a liner. And I load it up with thinned black and I just sort of push and pull the brush along the edge like so. So push and pull so it creates this sort of irregular you know, broken <laughs> look. from Deb. <laughs> she hasn't answered the question. Do we give it to Deb? I need to renew. I needed to renew. Okay. So congrats to Deb. <laughs> so there is how we do that broken, like that chippy paint look at the edge. It's just rolling the brush, push-pull along the edge. So I pull it back toward me push forward and it creates sort of that broken paint look along the edge and I need to dry it real quick so that we can move on to the next step This is where that liner brush comes in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. I like to highlight this edge a little bit. And so with that warm white, I follow along that edge with a thin line. I don't worry about it being right on the edge. I'm not worried about making it perfect. I'm just trying to get a little highlighted line along there. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Random generator is not playing nice today. No. No. But there's your winner for the stencils. That is Beth Root. Beth Root, you won yourself a set of those Snow Day stencil sets. It was a four stencil set, which is nice. So Just make sure Potter got a subscription to Painting World magazine. So yep. did Deb. Digital. Digital. Subscri yeah, right. a digital subscription. Yeah. And Anita Morin. She won a set of the stencils. Yeah, and same with Beth Root. And Beth Root. Awesome. It would not be the same without Renee. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Live with Tracy and Renee. Yeah, no, no. I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got that highlight along the edge of that sort of chippy paint look. And we dry that real quick, and then we'll finish this off with a nice little float of asphaltum along the edges. Thank you for your wonderful project. I look forward to these weekly lessons. So and I'm, the YouTube videos to go back. Okay. I'm going to take my angle, load it up with just a little bit of asphaltum. I'm going to actually thin this out quite a bit. I don't want it too strong. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little float along that edge, just under that little white highlight. Just to age the edges of this a tiny bit. You could do it before you put the highlight on, or you can do it after, it doesn't matter. Wow. There Linnell we go. Stewart. Swart? Linnell Swart. Seems to be a nickname. Mm -hmm. Saying hello from South Africa. Wow. So there you have it. We've got that painted rose. We've done our outlining. We've done our lettering. We've put a little textured edge on it. And then the last thing that you would do to finish this off is to lightly spatter it. I like to use both a little asphaltum and a little bit of white. I just like how it, it gives this a, uh, a more vintage look. So I'm gonna start with the white. And I'm just using one of those fugly brushes <laughs> to spatter it with. I like that little bit of white. And then I'll rinse this one out, and then I'm going to do the same thing again with a little bit of asphaltum. Oh, Karen Jones is working on her studio today. 
<laughs> and tomorrow she can paint. <laughs> Miss Karen just moved across the country just before the holidays. And so her poor studio is has not been built. <laughs> so she's just about ready to start playing. So. Uh, spattering is where I usually ruin my piece. Uh, you know what? The trick to spattering is using a brush, toothbrush, something that you can easily control mm -hmm. um, with tight bristles and don't over thin the paint. That's the trick is getting that right. Sandy does this technique. I call it the tap technique where you load up the brush and you, you know, you tap your brush like so yeah. on the handle of another brush. If I do that, I get paint everywhere. It makes uh, like an unholy mess. <laughs> Sandy's got the knack for that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I use, you know, the old toothbrush method with your fingers. I ruin my manicure every damn time, but it is what it is. <laughs> so that is it. Once it's lightly... Um, spattered you just set it aside to dry really well um, give it one or two coats of matte spray just to seal everything in and then uh, once that's completely dry you can apply whatever varnish you prefer i like the matte spray because i'm doing a lot of photography in the studio and i don't like a high shine and but i do like to you know add some protection to what i'm doing so that's why i use the matte spray for mine thank you for the class enjoyed it very much just placed an order Thank you for the great tutorial. Got in late, learn. This is a fun piece, and don't forget if if the word welcome isn't to your taste. Stay out. Um, <laughs> 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 That's actually I you know I gotta consider that that'd be actually pretty funny. Would put stay and, out instead of welcome. Well, wouldn't it be cute? You'd have this very you know elegant looking. elegant looking lots of pretty pink flowers, and then you know stay out in in, in, in the cursive too. in the in that pretty script. It would be funny. Uh, but there is a PDF in the freebies section on the website that has some alternative lettering choices for you. So I think there's four or five. So feel free to go to the freebie section and download that PDF. It's just called lettering, um, lettering alternatives. People are question marking fugly. Fugly? No, we're not going to say the actual word. No, this is a fugly brush. Oops. Holy cow. <laughs> wow, that's a I, real fugly uh, brush. <laughs> I broke it. So this is my fugly brush. This is a. Uh, oh, should we like black bar that, censor that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Veronica may be watching. I mean, if Veronica sees it, she'll probably send me another one. <laughs> 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 this is a fugly brush. It is a three quarter or one inch oval and caustic. I know I call it a fugly brush. That's just what I call it. But the actual name for this brush is a one inch oval. <laughs> And caustic. Jim wants a go away sign. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so um, I think that's just about it for today. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> He's such a uh, whatever. An A word. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> we have to keep track of how many curse words because YouTube is being. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys, I think that's just about it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me every Saturday. You guys have been amazing. You're so much fun. And um, let me know if you have any questions. You can message me through the website. We have that little messenger on there. Or you can message me on uh, Facebook or on Messenger. Um, I'm also on Instagram and I'm on YouTube. So don't forget to check out the YouTube channel too and hit the subscribe button. What else? Oh, next Saturday, we're going to have some fun, too. Which one? Oh, yes. Are we doing that one? We are. You're going to love this. I love this one. I get a lot of questions about um, the little paint? roses that I paint. This is what we're going to paint next week. The pig. <laughs> we're going to paint a pig. I, I love this one. And primarily, we're going to paint these um, these fun little roses in the corner. These are really easy to paint, but they are fun to do. And um, we're going to do some fun stuff with maybe a stencil and maybe some lettering. And um, yeah, so we're going to do a pig. That's that's the project for next we're week is the pig. We're going to paint a pig. It'll be a blast. Um, so please join me next Saturday at uh, 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, which is noon Eastern Standard Time, right here on Tracy Moreau Live. 
And uh, what else you got coming up? I've got some, actually I've got a couple of Zoom classes coming up. I've got one on the 10th of January and another one on the 6th of February. I need a calendar. And both of those are on the first page of the website. If you log on to the website, just scroll Ooh. down and you'll see where, where I'm teaching. 6th of January, you said? 10th of January. Okay, so you've got a busy weekend next week. I have a busy weekend next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to paint some pigs. You're going to paint some pigs on Saturday, and then what are you painting on for the Zoom class? Uh, oh, a sled. Painting oh, a sled. Oh, doing the sled, right. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you want to paint along with me, the pattern is available on the website, and the surface is from Cover Distributing, cdwood.com. I had that. I had yep. that. Yep. You'll be able to find that pig. She's really cute. I think she's fun. It makes a great kitchen decor piece. So uh, join me for that. We'll also have some giveaways. We've got some nice little Dynasty brush sets next week, and I think we even have some decor art product to give away as well. So guys, mwah, love you. Stay safe.